Well, it's taken me 37 episodes, but I can finally do a full three minutes of good news on the misogyny front this week. That's right, there'll be no government-mandated forced birthing this week, no lashes for getting raped without a license, no judicially sanctioned bodily autonomy surrendered to anyone's employer, no vaginal esophagus cameras, no bunny punching. I finally managed to scrape together three on-topic stories with happy endings for you in the same week. We'll start in the place you least expect me to start with the good news version of this week in misogyny. Saudi Arabia. You recall the story of Mesa Al, I already messed up her name one time during this segment, and her friend who were being held for driving and accessory to driving, respectively. Well, after a brief two-month stint in one of Saudi Arabia's many lovely prisons, the two were finally released last Friday. And we've talked about Saudi Arabia's driving ban plenty of times on this segment. But I think it's worth pointing out that according to the official story, the two weren't actually being held for the driving so much as the tweeting about it. So in an effort to make the miscarriage of justice more palatable, they're trying to emphasize that it's less about women driving and more about women speaking. And from speaking to fucking, we'll move to South Korea, where a long-standing ban on adultery was recently lifted. Not sure how long it was standing, but if it was more than four hours, they're supposed to contact the physician. Anyway, the law was in place since 1953, possibly to discourage fucking American GIs, but probably not. But as of a week ago today, a South Korean constitutional court abolished the two-year prison term that adultery could net you. Obviously, this had far-reaching implications for the more than 5,000 people who have been charged with adultery just since 2008, but it also had some economic implications. Within days of the announcement, the nation's largest condom manufacturer saw its stock price surge by 15% and get bigger around, too. And yes, we're doing good news this week, but that doesn't mean that it won't also be horrifying news. Because sometimes the fact that something was ever proposed in the first place overshadows the elation of eventually deciding not to do it. And for a prime example of that, we'll hop over to Indonesia, where the government has finally changed its mind on the despicable, pseudoscientific, dehumanizing, invasive, disgusting practice of virginity testing schoolgirls to make sure they're not prostitutes. The proposal would have required female students to pass a virginity virginity test before being allowed to graduate high school. And I guess the fact that there's no such thing as a virginity test wasn't quite enough to dissuade them, nor was the international outcry against their backward-ass country when it came to light that they were subjecting female police recruits to the same appalling practice. Apparently, in the intervening couple of months, they forgot that the rest of the world realizes what misogynistic assholes they are when they do stuff like this, and had to be reminded by a fresh outcry against this sodomization of human rights. So yeah, I'm guessing it'll be a while before I can find three good news stories out of places like Indonesia, Korea, and Saudi Arabia. But it was fun while it lasted. Just try not to think about how depressing it is that these are the least depressing women's rights stories I've found in almost a year of doing this. Or it'll defeat the purpose. And until next time, I'll hand things back over to Noah and Heath.